today's session, we're going to talk about the genetic algorithm, and we're going to dig into the details of how this algorithm works and how it's able to optimize our generative design models. This will give you insights on how to design your models better and how to troubleshoot issues that come up when you're using generative software like Discover. So over the course of the last few tutorials, we saw that the majority of the work in generative design is actually designing our generative models that are composed of two basic components. One, in which we create a set of parameters that generate uh, different options for a given design system. And number two, a set of measures which evaluate the performance of each of those design options. And all of that work comprises computational design and parametric modeling, and we've been doing it in Grasshopper, uh, assisted by writing Python scripts. Now, once that model is put together, the next stage is to actually run it through an optimization algorithm to optimize the best versions of designs coming from that design space based on the evaluation criteria that we set up. So we've been using uh, optimization and the genetic algorithm that's built into Discover throughout the course to test our models and to optimize them. Uh, so in this session, I'm gonna get into some of those details behind how the algorithm uh, actually works. And so what we've seen already is that uh, an optimization algorithm in general, and you know, genetic algorithms are just one example of different optimization algorithms that we can use, uh, but no matter what they are, every optimization algorithm is defined by three basic components. And so here you see the mathematical representation of those components. Uh, number one, we need at least one uh, objective function that basically outputs a value from a certain model and a goal to minimize or maximize that value. Uh, we have a set of constraints that dictate um, what outputs uh, generate feasible designs versus invalid designs. And then we have a set of parameters that basically plug into that model to create different variations um, uh, or different solutions to that model that can be evaluated through these objective and constraint functions. Uh, so this is a very general definition of an uh, optimization problem, but it applies to every kind of optimization algorithm, including the genetic algorithm in Discover. So here we see some more details about the three elements of optimization. We've already looked at these in a previous lecture, but just as a review, uh, we have parameters, uh, which can be one of three types based on how they control the model. Uh, we have objectives that could be either minimization or maximization criteria and constraints which set a specific definition from what creates or what deems a solution as valid and it can be expressed uh, in three different ways to equal a certain value, to be greater than a certain value, or to be smaller than a certain value. Now, these components together form what we call the design space model. So the design space model in generative design is basically that computational model. Uh, oftentimes, it's very similar to our parametric model. It basically defines a design system and expresses it uh, through a set of parameters on the one side. So these are the values that can be adjusted to create different solutions from the model. And on the other side, these outputs that dictate the performance of the model. And these inputs and outputs become the kind of controls that the optimization algorithm can tap into to start to control your model and automatically derive the best solutions. So I think of the inputs and outputs as kind of like the user interface for the computer and all the stuff internally is all the design that we do in the design space model. Now the optimization algorithm isn't going to know anything about how the designs are actually produced. That's a kind of a black box. Um, inside the model, all the optimization algorithm is gonna worry about is how can I tweak these parameters in order to optimize the results of the outputs. And it's gonna figure out those kind of patterns and um, connections to be able to derive those best solutions automatically, even without actually knowing how our grasshopper models are structured. So throughout this course, we've been using uh, Discover in connection with Grasshopper uh, to actually run those optimizations on the generative models that we design uh, in Grasshopper. And to support this kind of connection um, and expression of these different components of optimization uh, in our Grasshopper models, the Grasshopper library of Discover actually supports both uh, all three types of input parameters through the, um, special components. So we have continuous, categorical, and sequence parameter support, as well as the two types of uh, output goals objectives and constraints, and the ability to actually specify which type of constraint or objective 
we're working with. So these components allow us to take the computational models that we've already developed in Grasshopper using any kind of Grasshopper library or tool or Python script and connect them to Discover just to run that optimization piece of the workflow. And what optimization basically allows us to do is uh, take our generative computational model, uh, which can generate a huge amount of different design solutions. So we have the simple bridge example, uh, for instance, where we control all the structural members. And if we just tweak those parameters of the model randomly, we're going to generate like a huge set of designs, but most of them aren't going to make any sense, right? Because we're just generating them randomly. So even if there's a good bridge that's possible, using these parameters, any random setting of parameters is not going to really yield anything useful. But when we connect it to an optimization algorithm, instead of um, iterating through those different design options randomly, we're going to be able to actually optimize for the best solutions based on a set of higher level objectives. So in this case, even though there's a trillion different bridge options that are possible from these parameters, the optimization algorithm is actually able to find the, uh, the settings of those parameters, for example, the heights and the structure within each bay of the bridge in order to optimize those higher level metrics like the stiffness of the bridge and the minimization of its weight. So the key to this optimization process in Discover is the genetic algorithm. And the genetic algorithm, like I've said, is only one type of uh, optimization algorithm that can be used to optimize design problems. But by far, the genetic algorithm is the most popular optimization algorithm used in design tasks. And for that reason, it's also the algorithm that I've built into Discover. And the genetic algorithm uh, that is included in Discover is a pretty standard one. It's called the NSGA2 algorithm. And I'll post a link to the paper that describes the algorithm um, on the course website. So like many optimization algorithms, the genetic algorithm is actually based loosely or inspired by a uh, process in nature. And in this case, it's inspired by the way that evolution happens over generations in nature. So in nature, species develop through this long process of evolution, where you basically get incremental improvements and changes in a species uh, based on the evolution from generation to generation of members of that species. And often this is known as survival of the fittest. So you have a generation of, of members of a species. They compete with each other to survive. The ones who survive the longest um, are deemed to have the best genetic material. So they are able to reproduce and create new members of that species. And the hope is that that new member ad adopted some of the uh, features of its parents that caused it to survive and caused it to, uh, to be a successful member of the species. And those good features are passed down and maybe evolve into better and better features in the future. So the genetic algorithm uses this idea of evolution as a process to do a similar thing to our design models. Because our models define design spaces that have to be explored by the algorithm, the algorithm isn't going to know anything about that design space starting out. So what it'll do is it'll actually generate an initial set of designs uh, randomly, but then following this evolutionary process, it's able to develop better and better designs uh, uh, over several generations by learning what works best uh, in the generations before. And what's cool about the genetic algorithm is it's actually composed of just a small set of steps that enacted over and over cause this evolutionary process to occur. And the four steps we're going to look at behind the genetic algorithm are generation, selection, crossover, and mutation. So here's a brief description of those four steps. And then for the rest of the session, we're going to dig into the details of each of those four uh, elements. So in the first step, generation, this occurs once at the beginning of every optimization run. Uh, here, the genetic algorithm will produce um, a, a starting set of designs. We call this the first generation of designs. And it produces those designs randomly uh, by varying the parameters in the model kind of in a random way. So based on the type of parameters, you create random versions of them and you create this first generation of designs. Now, once you have this first generation of designs, you look at their objective and constraint values and you select two parent designs from the population to subject to crossover. So here there's a selection process where we take 
all the designs in the generation and we start picking out uh, parents based on the designs that show the best objectives and constraint values. Then once we have those two parents, we can recombine their parameter values in a process called crossover. So crossover is the process of taking two high-performing designs. So we make some assumption that there's something about the parameter values of the two parents that led them to be high-performing. And so we take those parameter values and we basically uh, recombine them to make a new design. So we take some parameters from one parent, some from the other. Sometimes we uh, sort of uh, combine the parameter values together or average them or any other kind of process to basically combine these two uh, designs into a single new design that hopefully inherits some of the strategies that made the two parents work. And so using this crossover process, uh, we take two parents at a time and cross them over to build up a new generation of designs, which become the child generation. Um, and uh, then we randomly subject some of those designs to mutation where we uh, sort of randomly switch the parameters around or randomly change them. And this introduces more variation into our, um, into our design pool. So similar like with uh, natural evolution, there's always this mutation process that ensures that the population doesn't stagnate. And there's always new ideas uh, brought and new genes brought into the gene pool. In our case, it's gonna mean that, you know, we're not restricted to just the parameter settings that we started with in the first generation. We're always gonna be able to introduce new variations throughout the, the optimization process, even as we're targeting specific performance during the crossover stage.